Welcome to Fortress of Faith with Tom Wallace. Strengthening the Saints against Islam's assault on North America. Well, thank you for joining us here again today at the Corner of Truth and Courage. You're listening to Fortress of Faith. This is Tom Wallace, and we have another day with Deborah Weiss on the program with us. And I usually get to see Deborah up at the national meeting in Washington, D.C., uh, Act for America with Brigitte Gabriel, her group up there. She brings in a great number of speakers, and Deborah speaks there from time to time. And she is an attorney. And, and I also see here that you directed the Manhattan uh, part, uh, Manhattan group, for Forbes presidential campaign. And uh, you've provided, you're an assistant there on the council to Giuliani's administration and a council for the Committee on House Oversight in Congress, and you've been involved in a number of different things, the go-to person, in my opinion, on the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which you authored a book there, the Organization of Islamic Corporation's Jihad on Free Speech. And Deborah, it's great to have you back on the program with us today. Great to be back. Well, we have been talking this week about M103 and the issues of this bill up there in Canada and this issue of Islamophobia to shut down free speech, uh, criticizing issues of Islam to make this a civil offense. And uh, then uh, we got into other discussions on, uh, on hate speech and legislation that's coming here in the United States in yesterday's broadcast. Uh, but there's more to talk about this hate speech legislation that the left is trying to get passed. Now, a couple years ago, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the only thing that they really are in poverty about is in their morals, in my opinion. They're a very rich organization uh, that is taking funding from many liberal organizations to attack people who stand for conservative and Christian values they have become an attack group to slander and to disparage the reputation of people who are speaking for uh, biblical principles, conservative principles, and they're trying to make them look like hate mongers, and they've created a hate list, and they put us and amongst other uh, good organizations in there. They have some nasty organizations that are operating that are certainly hate groups, but they're trying to smear Christian organizations by saying they are as equally as hateful, but um, and uh, other legitimate organizations that aren't Christian, for example, Center for Security Policy or Act for America. So they have uh, they have lumped in the legitimate organizations with the not legitimate organizations and painting them all with one brush. But what yes. they leave out, Tom, what they leave out is if you look at their list of quote extremist ideologies, there is no mention of Islamic extremism. It's just not a problem, I guess. Hmm. Well, also, too, on their website, uh, and I've taken, you know, uh, pictures of their, their website, uh, one of their articles that uh, Black Lives Matter is not a hate group. All right, well. <laughs> and neither is Antifa. Antifa is not a hate group either. That's right. Nothing on Antifa to disparage what they're doing. Why? Because they're left-supporting groups, and the SBLC certainly is not going to disparage what these groups are doing because they support it, and they will smear and take it. And, and this is an old tactic, and I've said this. Now, you're a lawyer, and you'll understand what I'm going to say. If you have to represent a client when the evidence is not good. You're not going to go in there and argue on the evidence. What you're going to do, you're going to have to discredit those who collected the evidence. So you're going to say, Your Honor, this policeman is uh, prejudiced against my client. He is a racist. He hates my client because he's black. And so, therefore, he must have planted this evidence or something. So you got to attack the character of the person that collected the evidence because the evidence doesn't look good. And so, I mean, the uh, O.J. Simpson uh, case was a, you know, textbook um, case for how to do that, to attack the collectors of the evidence. And so, you know, the problem is that the left, they can't argue with us with the facts because the facts, you know, we have the facts on our side and they support us and they don't support them. So they have to try to smear us. Is that what all this is about, in your opinion? Well, you know, Tom, I think you make a good point. 
if they could win the arguments on the merits, then why wouldn't they? This is a way to make their winning the argument a foregone conclusion, and let's just skip the debate altogether. We'll just call everybody a hate group or a bigot or a racist or an Islamophobe, and then we don't have to discuss are stronger borders a good idea or a bad idea? Is mm. having unvetted refugees from Muslim countries a good idea or a bad idea? Is having the Patriot Act a good idea or a bad idea? And we don't have to discuss the facts of the matter because if you disagree with their conclusion, you're just a hater and a bigot or a hate group. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> I would say, no say that the legislation coming down the pike and some that already passed, is not expressly on hate speech. What it's continually denouncing is hate groups or hatred in all its forms. And obviously, if you look at the Southern Poverty Law Center's list of, quote, hate groups, it's often groups that just have speech or viewpoints that are different than them. So it slips in that way. So it's not express legislation that is to outlaw speech that would violate the uh, First Amendment, but it gets slipped in there and winds up serving the purpose of intimidating legitimate either Christian organizations or national security organizations that do have conservative views because then they can be referred to as a hate group. Hmm. Now, is there anything that is coming into Congress on a federal level or on a state level that they're trying to make uh, bills? Yes, unfortunately, 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 there is. Uh, we have um, a Senate Joint Resolution 49, which already passed unanimously in both the House and the Senate, and this was after the Charlottesville incident, which took place between August 11th and August 12th. This this resolution. Um, you know, recognize those who died or who were injured and express support for them. And then it says it rejects white nationalists, white supremacists, the KKK, neo-Nazis, and other hate groups, and urges the president and his cabinet to use all available resources to address the threats posed by those groups. So similar to Motion 103, you see, this is not something that's binding that's going to happen, but they're letting you know the sentiment of the Congress and they're urging the president to do something about it. And again, they're using vague language. What is a hate group? Lately, the SPLC has become the standard, which many media outlets and otherwise legitimate organizations reference as their list. And you and I both know, and I assume your audience now knows, that the SPLC is not a legitimate organization. It's largely Soros funded. They have their own political agenda. Any organization that can't even mention Islamic extremism on their list of extremist ideologies, and yet they have your organization, or, yeah. you know, um, or the Family Research Council, I mean, just a plain Christian, mainstream, conservative Christian organization is, is obviously not a legitimate group. But so here they are, they're condemning, and what is a white nationalist? Like they they have white supremacists on there already, but what's a white nationalist? Because I have to tell you, aren't they saying, don't they call Trump a white nationalist? If you believe in America first, then I guess you're a white nationalist, one of the hate groups that they're condemning. So this language of being a hate group can be used to censor speech and viewpoints. It's not anything objective. It's a characterization. It's not a fact. And again, it's, you know, it's very biased and it's one-sided. So that's one, one resolution that already passed. One thing I want to mention is the anti-Islamophobia bills were only getting support from the Democrats. But now that they have this broader language, like hate groups, it's getting support from the Republicans as well, very mm. unfortunately. So that's one resolution that already passed. And there's another one that passed in the Senate and it's pending in the House which I alluded to on the last show that you and I did, House Resolution 257, which was actually introduced by a Republican in Virginia, Barbara Comstock, and it condemns hate crimes, which is already illegal here, um, hate crimes and any other form of racism, religious or ethnic bias and animus targeted toward a minority group. 
So here you go. They're going to condemn animus, which is basically hatred or hostility. I don't, I don't know how you're going to outlaw that. And as I said, once you say any other form, so you already have condemned hate crime, which is illegal. Hate crimes are illegal. But what other, any other form of racism, what are they referring to? Obviously, they're talking about forms of racism that are not crimes. And that's how you slip in the hate speech. It also calls on federal law enforcement to investigate hate crimes, incidents, and threats against minorities. So I'll bring attention to another word, the word incident. What's a hate incident? We already have anti-discrimination laws, and we have hate crimes laws. Hate incidents needs to be distinguished from hate crimes. Incidents and data collected on incidents are reports that anybody feels that you know, if they feel that they were discriminated against, if you looked at them cross-eyed and they think it's because of their race or religion, even though there's no objective evidence for that, it's just their own subjective feeling, they can report that as a hate incident and it will be collected and used for political purposes as though it has some legitimate meaning. And then threats. So all of these words are vague, they're subjective, they're one-sided, and they're not verified and that bill is pending. Now, I will tell you that this bill that's pending, the original drafters were two Muslim organizations. One is MPAC, Muslim Public Affairs Council, which is a Muslim Brotherhood front group. And the other group is called Emerge. It's now changed its name to Engage. And Engage is a politically oriented Muslim organization whose mission is to get out the vote of Muslims, and they are pushing anti-hate legislation. So all of these groups were previously pushing anti-Islamophobia legislation. They got nowhere with the Republicans, but now that they're calling it anti-hate legislation, Republicans are signing on, and you can bet that when these things are passed, they will be used for political purposes to target uh, national security policies, to prevent or address Islamic terrorism. Specifically, I'm sure that's their motivation, but it can be twisted around just to stop the debate on basic conservative viewpoints, as you pointed out, not just against trying to stamp out Islamic terrorists, so Christians who might not believe that gay marriage you know, is ideal, yeah. for example, because then you're a hate group, you're anti-gay, you're anti-trans, yeah. you're anti-gay. So you're you know, folks, we've got to be careful. Rahm Emanuel, remember him? He was the guy that was working with Obama in the White House when Obama first got in there. And, you know, when they, I can't remember what the tragedy was, but he said, you know, you don't want to miss the opportunity of, of a disaster. And, uh, you know, and so they use, and, and, and the left is, they're masters at doing this. And this incident in Charlottesville is another example of doing that, of trying to get legislation, getting people voting by their emotion and not with their reason, with their mind, with their brain. And, uh, and, we, and before you know it, we've slipped down into a dangerous position. And uh, well, the time has just gone by again. And it's a joy to have you on the program always with us. Deborah, thank you so much for enlightening us about these dangerous legislative efforts that are going on. Thank you. Well, folks, thank you for joining us, and we'll be back with you tomorrow at the Corner of Truth and Courage. God bless you.